United USA. Now the red flag, we seem to be seeing people's rights being violated on a regular basis. Here is another example. He had a gun pulled. He walked up to my window, didn't identify himself. I had no clue who he was. Uh, he told me that if I didn't roll down my window, he was going to put a bullet in my f***ing skull. It was in his mind to kill me. He tried to smash the window open with the barrel of the gun. He stood there and stood there and he kept telling me to get out of the car and I told him I wasn't. And uh, he tried to pull the trigger. There's no way that he would have put his finger on the trigger and found out the gun was jammed unless he tried to pull the trigger. Hi everyone, my name is Justin Wilson. I am the Senior Director of Communications here at the Institute for Justice, and today I'm joined by our client, Kevin Burt. We filed a cert petition with the United States Supreme Court seeking to hold accountable a federal agent that attacked Kevin trying to settle a personal dispute. My ex-girlfriend, the mother of my child, was about in an accident. Um, I got a phone call and was telling me that she was involved in a serious accident and she might die. I left my house and went to the hospital. Um, I got there and it, it was as bad as what I was told. Kevin's story begins when his ex-girlfriend, who is the mother of his child, was involved in a traumatic car crash. Kevin went to the hospital to see how she was doing and after hearing her story, went to the restaurant where she was drinking with her boyfriend the previous night. When Kevin arrived at the restaurant, the staff told him that he could wait for the manager to arrive if he wanted to see the security camera footage. And while he was sitting in the parking lot waiting for the manager to show up, Agent Lamb approached him. The look in his face and the determination, it, it, it scared me. I thought I was going to lose my life. When the police arrive, uh, as soon as they're busy, he reaches down and picks up the shells that were ejected, uh, one from whenever he tried to smash the window out and the second from whenever he racked the shell before he tried to shoot me. Kevin was afraid for his life. This random stranger had just tried to shoot him, and so he would called the police. But when the police arrived, they walked past Agent Lamb and arrested Kevin. They walked right past him. They didn't pull out any guns. They didn't do anything. They came immediately to the vehicle and told me to get out and put me in handcuffs. Uh, he did tell me that he was a Homeland Security agent. I, once the hat and stuff was off, I did recognize him from the hospital. I had seen him briefly for a, a millisecond in the lobby. But at that point in time, I didn't know who he was. And I certainly didn't know he was a Homeland Security agent. After they watched the security camera footage, the police actually recognized that Agent Lamb was the aggressor in the situation, and they arrested him. But he was eventually let off, and that's what led Kevin to file his lawsuit. I had been put in contact with an attorney, um, and he told me that this case had a lot of credibility, especially after he'd seen the video. And so he wanted to pursue them, and so we did. After Kevin filed his lawsuit, the judge said his suit could proceed against the agent. But then a higher court found that because the agent was a federal officer and not a local police officer, he was immune from any kind of lawsuit, including what? one seeking to hold him accountable for what he'd done. What? He was immune to any kind of punishment. Oh my God. With this case, the Institute for Justice is seeking to settle once and for all how federal agents can be held accountable in the courts. I'm hoping that they change the law because yes. officers of the law should be held to a higher standard. Right. What's at stake in this case is whether federal officers get to operate in what one judge described as a constitution-free zone. If the Supreme Court turns down Kevin's case, it would mean little to no accountability for over 100,000 federal police officers when they violate people's constitutional rights. But a federal badge is not a shield against the Constitution. Yes, indeed, absolutely. The Constitution is the only thing that protects us against anarchy, and without it, we would be in big trouble. People that are in service in law enforcement should be held to a higher standard. I know we grew up watching 007 movies, Licensed to Kill, but this is a little bit ridiculous. Great responsibility comes great accountability. If you agree, please like and share.